everyone, my name is Chloe, and today I'm here to do my second half of April wrap up. So I am coming to you from a different spot because I have found a way that I think is going to work a little bit better for wrap ups, and it is that I am like stashing. I've got a little desk here in my office, and our room is a nightmare, but um. I've got a little desk in here and I can stash it up high and my kids don't mess with these books and it works really good because then now I can actually hold them up for you and I've got like a good spot to put them that they don't have access to. So I'm going to try this out for um, just a little bit and see if it works and we'll just see. So my, sorry for like the background being uh, a mess, but it's just, it is what it is. So um, let's just get into it. As always, I'm going to tell you my stats for the second half of the month and then go through the books and the, well, somewhat in the order that I read them. Actually, I will do the middle grade books that I read first and then the adult and ones that I read with myself later. Um, so I will have timestamps down below if you're interested in the middle grade that I'm reading with my daughters or if you just want to hear about the stuff that I'm reading for myself. Um, yeah, click wherever you, you want. You can watch the whole video or not. So let's just get into it. So in the second half of April, we slash I read a ton. I read 21 books plus a DNF. That's 4,297 pages, um, which is 286 pages per day, which is crazy. I like, I don't know how that's happening, except that my girls are both, I have a five, almost three, and then almost one year old. And my five and three year olds are very into reading. And so like every chance we get, they want to pick up a book. And so we are like blazing through the middle grade books. But um, the average page length of my books is 205 pages so you will see that there is a heavy weight on that middle grade and I'm reading 1.4 books a day so um it feels really good we're really like on a roll if not me then them but kind of all of us and it feels good so um I read 11 chapter books eight novels and two graphic novels so I did read two uh, middle grade graphic novels for myself this month that were not with my kids and so um you'll see that as we go on I read seven adult, one young adult, and 13 middle grade. Um, seven were from my shelf and 14 were for, from somewhere else. So again, I'm not loving that ratio, but it's okay because we're using the library a lot for their books and um, that I'm fine with that. So we got 12 from the library, six from Libby, um, one from Libro.fm, one from Kindle Unlimited, and one from Hoopla. I read 13 of these books physically, five on audio, and three on ebook. And I have said it before, I'll say it again ebook is my least favorite way of consuming things, but it's just so dang convenient. So um, I'm really like trying to come into the ebook love because it's just so convenient and it's like the best of all worlds. So as far as like convenience goes. Um, but I just love holding a book. And if I can't physically hold a book, I just want audio. So, um, but I'm coming into some ebook love, I think. So I read eight sci fi fantasy, and you will see um, that's because we are talking about like mythical creatures in one of the series that my girls are really, really into right now. Um, four women's fiction, three contemporary, two nonfiction, two mystery thriller, one romance, and one nature. So as far as the star ratings go, um, I had one DNF, and then the next rating was a three star. I had six three stars, eight three and a half stars, six four stars, and one five star. So the average was 3.57. But honestly, my books that I read for me were all pretty good. And so um, you will see you will see that uh, I would say it was a good second half of the month. So let's just get into the book. So um, the first things that we read as with my girls is this Ella and Owen series. This is about brother and sister dragons who go on these different adventures. Um, and there's all these mythical creatures and things that they encounter along the way. So we read Attack of the Stinky Fish Monster and Knights and Dragons, and um, or Knights versus Dragons, because Knights and Dragons don't get along. But then we realize it's just a miscommunication, and it's great. Um, this is, for me, like a three-star series. It's a little bit out there, and um, it's all black and white pictures and I feel like we could really use some color and that's going to be like kind of a resounding complaint of mine um through some of these middle grade we I don't know I've talked about it before but we are blowing through um little b little b books is the publisher on these and um we've just fallen in love with that publisher because they're really great like if you see the inside they are um I mean there's there's pictures on almost every page. Um, there's a fair amount of words, but it's not so much that everybody gets bogged down. And so um, this Little Bee Books is a really great publishing house for um, for these kind of books. However, there's not a lot of color. So 
Then um, we read Freckle Juice by Judy Bloom. This is really short, and it's about a kid who wants to have freckles, so he tries to make that, like, this little girl sells him this potion that, like, supposedly will make him have freckles. And this little girl's a genius, man. She's, like, making money and off of, like, it's, like, all sorts of gross stuff thrown together. It doesn't work, and he does something different, and it's cute. Um, there's one kid in his class that has a ton of freckles that doesn't want them, so it's kind of like the grass is always greener. There's This is, like... Uh, gosh, less than 100 pages, and it is really quick, and it's a cute story. Honestly, I like this better than the girls did, though, just so you know. Um, this is another series that genuinely I think I like more than the girls do, but this is Sophie, The Adventures of Sophie Mouse. This is number 10. It is a long series. There's 20 plus books, and um, this is about a little girl named, or a little mouse named Sophie, and she's an artist, and she's so sweet. The holiday vibes and like the the atmosphere in these books is great. Um, there's a friend group. Her She's got a friend named Hattie and Owen, who's the snake, and um, they're really, really cute. I really like these. The girls um, don't love them quite as much, and I'm not sure why. Um, it's just not their favorite, but it is one of my favorites, so we're going to continue. Um, but what they have fallen in love with this month is these Tales of Sasha books. So Sasha is a horse who, in the beginning of the series, finds out that she has wings. She is a flying horse. She's not a unicorn. I think I said that in another wrap-up that she's a unicorn. She's not a unicorn. She's a flying horse. And there's this whole community of flying horses that nobody ever, like, she never knew anything about. And she um, is actually a princess uh, of the flying horses. And so she, her parents put her in the, like, earthling mortal world or whatever to protect her and so now um we have princess lessons the plant pixies um let's see wings for wyatt which wyatt is her best friend who is like a non-flying horse and so he's feeling left out um the royal island uh showtime let's see the disappearing history and a mystery message so we read all of these in the last two weeks. And um, like I said, the girls love them. There's only one more left. And I'm kind of happy because this is like a three, maybe three and a half star series for me. It, they're fine. They're just not that great. And like, I feel like this one especially could really use some color. Like the color is a huge part of this in the flowers that they're do using and all that kind of stuff. Um, colors are a huge part of it. And yet there's no color in the text. And so I feel like that's kind of missing. And then these are all like they leave on kind of cliffhangers. And so like I don't feel like they are complete stories in and of themselves. And they're just over 100 pages each. And like I just feel like they're almost all just kind of bridge books that like keep you going. Like if we put maybe two books in one to have more of a complete story, um, it would be more satisfying to me, but whatever they, they didn't ask when they wrote those. So, um, yeah, those are, those are what the girls are into right now. And, um, they're cute. So then I read two middle grade graphic novels for myself because I am so behind in content. You guys, long story, this is probably nothing you care about, but when I watch YouTube is in the morning while I'm working out. I either run, do the elliptical, or ride a bike, and I we have a little home gym in our basement kind of thing, and so I've got those cardio things, and I love to do an hour of that while watching YouTube. I, it is like what brings me life and what makes me like sane for the rest of the day, so I do that every day. Well, um, back in November, yes, right, it was right before Thanksgiving, I broke my ankle and I could not do any of that for a long time. It was, it was really bad. Um, and so I ne like almost never watched BookTube, which means my watch later list got to like 500 something. And now it's down to like, 400 but i'm still really behind so i've been watching a lot of middle grade march content at on april 30th um and there was also the Let, let's get graphic readathon and so i got heavily influenced um by both of those things and i picked up these two books so the first one is smaller sister and this is by maggie edkins willis and this one was my five star this was so good but so hard so this is about a um a set of sisters as you see and um the big sister they're really close like less than two years apart and the big sister um starts to struggle with anorexia and you see that um on page like you just you see her spiraling down and you see the you see a very real portrayal of anorexia in here and so then our younger sister starts to question like 
what's, is my body okay? And um, the family moves schools, I think three times in over the course of like a year. And so um, that was kind of a trigger to our older sister who, you know, was really comfortable in the first school and then all the change, you know, there's a lot of people. Plus she was like 12, 13, kind of in that prime um, cattiness stage and just a lot of things like not saying any of those things can cause an eating disorder, but, um, can kind of trigger something that's lying dormant. And, and so then there's a lot of change that continues to happen and everybody kind of questions, is my body okay? And I just loved the discussion in this book. I love the discussion and I loved how real it was. And in the end, um, it does talk about the author's note says um, that this is kind of based on our author's true story. Her big sister um, struggled with anorexia and she kind of dipped into that for a while because she was questioning her body. And it was just, it was so good, but so heavy. And definitely beware if like anorexia and eating disorders is a trigger, this, this goes there. So um, really like this, feel like it was a really good read. The other thing that I read was Swim Team, um, and this is by Johnny Christmas, I think. Yeah, Johnny Christmas. And this is blurbed by Jerry Craft. And Jerry Craft is one of my all time favorite middle grade graphic novel artists and authors. And um, this one was fine. This one is about a little girl who, well, she's not little, she's a middle schooler. Um, she goes to a new school, her and her dad move, and they go to a new school. And I just loved it. They move into this like apartment community. And they meet their neighbor, and it's this older lady. And she, let me see if I can find her picture, because she's just lovely. She is lovely. And she says, hi, I'm your neighbor, Etta. And you guys, my daughter is Etta, and I her name is Etta Ruth. And I just, like, love the old lady vibes that come from her. And this is, like, an old lady. I can't find her picture, but um, she's, oh, here she is. She's just awesome. There's old Etta. And um, I just love this. I Like, I love that part of it. But this book is, so she is at this new school, and the only elective left for her is Swim 101. And she does not want to do that because she's not into sports. She's really into math, um, but she can't, and she can't swim. And so she is scared and does not want to do it. And Etta actually helps her um, because Etta used to be a swimmer when she was younger. And, um, so she helps her learn how to swim and we, we really learn about like overcoming fears, finding confidence, um, finding your place, especially in that middle school age. That's definitely really relevant. Um, and we learn a lot about, um, black history, especially in regards to swimming and why the stereotype exists that black people can't swim, um, because they were so segregated and weren't given access to pools and that kind of stuff. Um, so this was really impactful in those ways, but I wanted more from it. Like we, so Etta teaches her how to swim and we get that, but we really just get that like from the periphery. She has, there's a lot of friendships explored in this book and um, we get them, but I wanted more. Like I, I didn't feel it. I didn't know. And like the artwork is not my favorite. The characters are not very detailed. And so um, that combined with the lack of depth made it like almost hard to differentiate people in in a meaningful way. And this one is one that I had to stop and start quite a few times um, just because I had to read it when, when I had chunks available. And this definitely is one that if you can just get in the story and stay there, um, it won't take too terribly long to read. And I think that would really do a, a favor to this book, um, just kind of getting in the world and staying in it because there wasn't enough draw to make me want to keep coming back a whole lot. So um, while I think this was really good in theory, I love the idea. I love the premise. I love the inclusions of black history. Um, the execution was a little off for me. So there's that one. So then let's get into the adult books that I read. Actually, there's one YA and then um, the adult books that I read. So the first one was I Was Here by Gail Foreman. Uh, this is one that I don't remember when it came out, but like I've heard about it forever. It was on my shelves and whew, it was depressing, you guys. So this is about um, a girl, I can't remember anybody's name, Cody. Um, and now Meg's Meg is her best friend, and I think it's maybe like their first year of college, so I don't know if you call this new adult, young adult, I don't know, but um, she commits suicide, and um, so Cody does not believe that would ever happen. She does not believe that her best friend would ever do that, and so she goes to try to figure out kind of what happened. It just gets heavy. It's depressing. It's a lot. Um, we do have a good mental health discussion going on, but this, so this was 
good but not good. It was I gave it three and a half stars. I really don't feel like I can like speak eloquently. Um, she does have like a partner in crime who is Ben, which was her friend's um, kind of boyfriend, and so that relationship's a little weird. There's a lot that's just a little weird about this. I'm not sure how I felt, um, but I gave it three and a half stars. Next is The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. So this is everywhere. I picked, or no, actually Brie, uh, my good friend Brie from uh, Brianna Bashley on Instagram, she sent me this book because she got it um, from the publisher. And I was really excited to read this. I debated getting it as my um, book of the month. And I'm in the camp of this was just okay. I, I know a couple people love it and a couple people say it's just okay. I'm in camp, it was, it was just okay. So this is about a woman who was given this opportunity to go to a uh, one month, I think, writing retreat. So it's at this um, well-known, beloved uh, horror thriller author's um, house. And they, she says, okay, you have a month to write a novel. And the winner will get uh, like a million-dollar publishing deal. And it's going to be this big thing. Okay. So um, she also has this former best friend that something happened. She had a fallout with her. And um, that former best friend is also going to be at this retreat. It's a group of five women or something that um, are going as as the potential authors. Uh, and they're two of, they are two of them. So uh, I really like the atmosphere in this book. I really liked, like, we got the creepiness of the house where they're, or the area where they were staying. We got um, a lot of good vibes from that, I would say. There's definitely um, some tension. However, I don't feel like the, like, tension made sense because things start happening in this book that are really, um, like, I think anybody would be like, okay, I'm out. I'm out. And, like, none of these people... Um, have enough backstory to say like why like because like our main character she's got a decent life um, without this she's not like super hard up for cash that like she has to stay there um, she needs this money to change I mean of course a million dollar publishing deal is going to change her life she's kind of in a writing slump and that kind of stuff but like the stakes are too high it doesn't make sense like it why are all these people staying and um the thriller author that is like running this thing she does some terrible stuff to these people and nobody really says like anything about it and it just did not make sense to me I like I think at least a couple people would be like all right I'm out um the all, other thing is we get a book within a book in this um, in this story, and that's not a thing that I really love. I don't like like we get the book that our main character is writing. Um, we get excerpts of that throughout this book, and I don't really like that trope. Um, and it just like felt disconnected for me in this. And then finally, my last complaint is our uh, main character is very sexually frustrated and has explicit dreams multiple multiple times in this book, and we hear all of it, and it was compl- like we got I got it like after one I get that you're sexually frustrated that it was off-putting it was really off-putting so this is a three star I honestly don't think I'll keep it on my shelf so if you want it check Pango um I'll probably list it for pretty cheap because I don't need to keep it so that's my thoughts on that um next is True Love and Other Lies by Whitney Gaskell so this is one of those old 2004 I think maybe um women's fiction books that I love so much so this is about a girl named Claire, um, and she meets a guy named Jack on a plane, and the two have, like, an instant connection, and despite the fact that I think she lives in New York and he lives in L.A., yeah, um, it, uh, uh, otherwise everything is perfect, and so they kind of have a relationship, and then she realizes that her best friend, who was also in London, um, just broke up with a guy, and it's Jack's the same guy, so um, there is a lot going on between the friends this is definitely it is it has a romance but i would say it's definitely more women's fiction it definitely has those early 2000s uh diet culture body shamey elements thrown in um but i just i i love this genre and so this kind of fit just with what i was wanting and i gave it four stars um yeah there's some dynamics between her and her parents and her and her friend. And um, it was just a, a chiclet women's fiction with some deeper elements. I gave it four stars. Next is The Life She Wants by Robin Carr. So this is about a woman. Um, this is a standalone. And it's got deckled edges, you guys. And I feel like deckled edges maybe have their place. Um, but, like, a women's fiction is not 
where they belong. But I'm not a fan of deckled edges, so don't come out for that. But um, this is about a woman who her husband got in trouble for embezzling large amounts of money. And so he um, unalived himself. And now it's her kind of starting over and finding the life she wants. And she um, finds that she wants a much quieter life and all of that. Um, Her name is Emma. So she goes back to her hometown. And she's got this one friend who is the brother of her former best friend. But her former best friend, the fresh their freshman year in college, um, she went, Emma went off to college and her best friend and her boyfriend stayed in town and they ended up hooking up and having a baby while she was in freshman year. So she has not spoken to her former best friend, but she is still friends with his brother. And so, um, there's that kind of relationship going on, but it's really an exploration of fi- her finding the life she wants. And I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, next is the party by Robin Harding. So this has very low ratings on Goodreads. And so I am not going to lie. I was really nervous, but I actually really enjoyed this. So, um, this is about a party gone wrong. So this woman, um, we're, it's told mostly from, um, from, well, it's told from the parents perspective as well as the kids, I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's told from multiple perspectives. And this is about, so these parents, they have a daughter who's turning 16 years old. And um, the mom is really strict, really strict, and really wants to coddle her baby, you know, which I like totally get. She's definitely a helicopter mom. And her baby's turn, or her kid's turning 16. And um, so she lets her have like all these girls over. And one of them is like a best friend that's been there forever. And the other ones are kind of like sketchy influences. One, She's got one of the sketchy influences, the girl that she thinks is sketchy anyway has a single mom who um is kind of like lives more of a party lifestyle and they just don't see eye to eye so this part the sweet 16 goes terribly wrong there's alcohol there's drugs all of that and somebody gets very 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 badly injured and so it is the aftermath of that um and yeah it says tense and riveting what lies inside a family is not always as it seems definitely we see the aftermath and how it impacts the whole community and i just kind of love those community studies like and not like the community like the entire town but like all the friends and their parents and um the girls like the relationship between the girls the relationship between the girl and her mom like there's all that going on and i really liked it i really liked it and gave it four stars so i don't know why everybody hates this but i liked it um, next is The Other Woman by Jane Green. So Jane Green is another person that is on my shelves a lot because she just writes, like, just what I need. And this one was was no different. This is about a woman, her and her husband, to have a baby. And um, then her mother, like, so she meets this guy. She came from, like, a broken family. She did not have a very stable family life. And so um, she meets this guy who they have family dinner every Sunday. Their family's super tight knit. The mother in law is like, or the mother is more than happy to like bring our main character in as another daughter. Ellie is her name um, to bring our main character in. So bring Ellie in. She's another daughter. Loves her like a daughter. All that kind of stuff. But then as they get married and life goes on, there she's like. This mother-in-law is a little overbearing. There's a lot going on here. And, um, yeah, things start happening. And uh, I don't want to say too much about this because there is something that happens between the mother-in-law and Ellie that um, really involving her child that really, like, causes a huge no speaking rift that it's kind of like the climax of the tenseness in their relationship. And, um I, I didn't know anything about that until it happened. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, so I feel I, I, like I'm not going to say anything about that. But anyway, this um, is a book that I found both funny and relatable and like all sorts of things because anybody who has a mother-in-law that relationship is is weird no matter who you are like I feel like a mother-in-law relationship is always unique um because you know as the wife you're kind of not replacing the mother figure but like it's just a weird dynamic it is always a weird dynamic and the the husband in this I would say um I, I didn't really understand his stance because at times he like very blatantly picked his mother over his wife. And then other times it was like they were on the same team. Like, yeah, we're, this is crazy. And um, I didn't really understand his perspective. And then there is a third act conflict that goes on way too long for me and further made me like, eh, I don't know if I like this guy. So um, three and a half stars. I like it. I still think Jane Green is a great author for women's fiction stuff and yeah, so this was good. Then the last one is the only one that I don't have physically, and it's called Parenting. Doing it right, 
I think, Getting It Right, something by Andy Stanley and uh, Sandra Stanley. And I wonder if they ever get called Andy and Andy and what Sandra, Sa- Andy and Sandy. Uh, like I feel like Andy and Sandra Stanley is really hard to say for some reason, and it's even hard to type. I like mess it up every time, but um. I love Andy Stanley. I love Andy Stanley. And I think we actually share a birthday. Um, But I love him. And I was reading some Louis Giglio um, last month or sometime. And he and Andy Stanley are really good friends. And so it, like, had me on a tear of wanting to read, like, all their books ever. And this one is a relatively new parenting book um, by Andy Andy and Sandra. And they have three kids that are now grown. And... um, I loved this. I honestly really liked it. I gave it four stars because it does, they are speaking from a a really high place of privilege and they don't like acknowledge that. And like there is, there, I would not say this comes off as holier than thou, but kind of like, hey, our kids are in our 20s, in their 20s, we figured this out. um, Where I like, I don't feel like anybody's ever figured out parenting. And I feel like the dynamics are always interesting and changing. But um, their whole philosophy in parenting is relationships first. And that is something I get behind wholeheartedly. Like, um, when making decisions, when doing things, think about your relationship with your child, not to say you're supposed to be their friend forever. Um, but thinking about how to make them, um, want to be with you even when they don't have to anymore and, um, making them good people. And so their two rules were honor your mother and, um, don't lie basically. And honor your mother, um, they say it was kind of all, all encompassing because that means like clean your room because it's important to your mother and like all these things that I'm like, I can get behind that. Honor your mother. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, be polite at the dinner table, all that kind of stuff. And then, um, don't lie. Not because like, so Andy Stanley is a, a pastor and, um, a Christian speaker, if you don't know who he is. Um, and so, the don't lie is not because, you know, it's a sin, it hurts God, all that kind of stuff. No, it's because it hurts relationships. When you lie to somebody, you break trust. And um, yeah, so I think that was really like a good thing because we are deep in the lying stage and um, my five and three-year-old argue constantly and are unkind to each other constantly and I I wonder how much they could understand of um that if I kind of had a talk with them which goes into um the last thing that I loved about this book is they break parenting into four stages and um the first stage is zero to five which is the discipline stage where you really set the ground rules for a lot of things and so zero to five that's where I am right now and there's just setting the ground rules for a lot of things and then five to twelve um, actually, I'm going to look at my Goodreads review because I wrote it in there um, because I wanted to remember it because these are really good. Okay, sorry. Finally found it. Um, so the discipline stage is 0 to 5. The training stage is 5 to 12. Uh, the coaching stage is 12 to 18. And then 18 plus is the friendship stage. And I just love this because she was also, ta- was a- San- Sandra was also talking about how like, we as parents need to keep that in mind and move, allow the children to move along in those stages. Now, they're not hard and fast. Like, my kid turned five. Now, they're in the training stage. Um, but, like, okay, now the groundwork has been set. Let's train them to do things themselves. And then, you know, as as we get into the coaching stage, let's back off a little more and coach them. And um, then once they're 18 – presumably we've done our jobs and we can finally enjoy like the friendship element and not overstep our bounds as their parents and tell them what to do and how to live their life once they're 18 because that's no longer our job and I just love the way they talked about that and um overall I feel like this had a lot of good insights and it was really good so that is everything that I read in the second half of April. Sorry, I got really chatty um, just because I had a lot of thoughts about a lot of these things. So if you've read any of these books, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.